When they brought me back from the breakout room into the regular room full of my committee, the first words that I heard were, we regret to inform you. What's going on, smart people? I've made a lot of videos over the years talking about exams that I was taking or exams that were coming up in undergrad and especially in grad school. In grad school, you're taking graduate level physics courses. Naturally, there's going to be exams within those courses. No surprise there. But on top of that, there are two really big exams that anyone who wants to do a PhD, at least at NMSU, has to take as well. The first of which is called the qualifying exam, which I've made videos on. It's the test so nice I took it twice. And it's more or less at the level of like advanced undergraduate material. Basically, if you saw it once in undergrad, it was fair game. If you get what's referred to as a PhD level pass on that exam, then once you've finished your graduate level courses, then you are qualified to take the written portion of the comprehensive exam. If it sounds long and drawn out, that's because it kind of is in my opinion, but it is what it is. The written portion of the comprehensive exam is an exam on all of the graduate level courses that you had to take, but all at one time. So that's fun, right? I made videos on that as well. And there's two tiers of passing that. There's what's referred to as the conditional pass, which means you did well, but there should be some additional information that you provide to your oral exam committee to convince them that you will be able to finish a PhD. And that additional information is a research proposal. We'll talk about your research and your research plans. If you get an unconditional pass, which is what I received, that additional information isn't needed and you just have to do the normal oral exam as is. I misunderstood what those tiers meant, and initially I thought if I got the unconditional pass, that just meant that I give a research presentation and then I'm done with it. And then about a week and a half before my oral exam, I found out that that was not the case. So that's great. Uh, but in any case, those, those are the tiers of passing for the written portion. Then once you pass that, you have to take the oral exam. You have to take both and the qualifier in order to truly be considered a PhD candidate. Last week, I took my oral exam. With it being still covid -y outside, the setting was a bit different. Rather than me giving my oral to a room full of my superiors uh, on campus, it was instead done as a Zoom meeting, which was probably different, probably be different than how you experience it. Um, but that was really, I guess, the only difference. And my advisors suggested that I still make a research proposal or a, a research presentation. That way the questions that I'm asked are steered in the direction of what I'm talking about and what I know how to talk about. So it's kind of like a, a nice strategic, some nice strategic advice there. So that's what I did. I made a research presentation on what I'm doing, which is studying what's called the D term. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll talk about it more maybe in a little bit. Um, and I also had to put together my oral exam committee, which consisted of five members, three of which were theoretical nuclear particle physics in that realm. One was an experimental nuclear physicist who I took a couple courses with. Uh, he asked really cool questions, so I wanted him on my committee for sure. Uh, I took his course in experimental nuclear physics as well as high energy physics. And then we also need a representative from the dean. So for some reason, that just means get someone from out of the department. So I asked someone who was in the astronomy department who does like stellar astrophysics. So I thought that was a good fit. So that was my research committee or my oral exam committee. And it started off with me just giving my research presentation. So I have a really hard time, I think, understanding how to present theoretical research, not theoretical research, but research on theoretical physics, because it's so in my head that all I'm doing is, is doing math every single day. But you know that n no one wants to stare at that on slides. So I really, it was, it was difficult for me to throw this together, I'll be honest. But it started out with me talking about what are important questions in nuclear physics, uh, who gets to decide what's an important question, one of those important questions being uh, where do properties of nuclear matter come from and how is it distributed, then I got into where's that information contained, I talk about form factors, and then I talk about my own research which is form factors of what's called the energy momentum tensor, specifically the D term which is, uh, we think it's related to pressure distributions inside of the proton or neutron. So it's really like a thesis proposal, like I talked about what my research is and where it's headed. And then towards the end of the talk, so it was about 35 minutes long, at the end, I just, you get grilled on it. You get asked questions about what you talked about, go figure. So one of my, as an example, one committee member asked a lot of questions that were a bit more on the technical side, I suppose, like, 
uh, I'll make, I'd made a statement on constraints on one term, making it have a certain normalization. He asked me to prove it, which involves, you know, taking traces of the energy momentum tensor and going to, yeah, just things like that. Uh, the other, the experimentalist on my committee asked a lot of like particle physics questions, talking about mesons. The fan favorite meson for nuclear physics is the pion. So I got questions like why is the lifetime of the neutral pion shorter than that of the charged pion? Long story short about that is it wasn't necessarily just questions about my research. In my experience, it was questions about my research as well as courses that were relevant to my research which is what my advisor said is probably going to happen, but it's not necessarily a rule. Once all of that ended and no one had any additional questions, then they sent me to a breakout room so I couldn't hear their discussion, and then they just discussed my future. And then when they brought me back from the breakout room into the regular room full of my committee, the first words that I heard were, we regret to inform you. Seriously, the first words going back into into the regular breakout room. I thought I did well. I get brought in and I hear, we regret to inform you, and my heart sank. And that came from my advisor, by the way. So my advisor says, we regret to inform you that you have been sentenced to complete a dissertation. So I passed. I passed my oral exam. They really enjoyed my presentation. My, my advisors loved it, which is really the the important part if there's anyone you want to impress it's your advisors uh, <laughs> so when he says we've sentenced you to complete a dissertation i responded with oh god can you please just send me to jail <laughs> so then after all of that my advisor uh elaborated a little bit more on expectations slash hopes for my dissertation and basically he said that with the topic in mind if I'm successful, it'll it'll be a big contribution. He said that even if it falls short, then the steps getting there in themselves are worthy of a PhD. I'll talk about that more once I understand it more. But uh, that was pretty exciting to hear that you know there's big there's a big goal in mind. Um, so for you, those of you who have to go through an oral exam and maybe you're a little afraid of it, um, in my experience and in without exception, other people who I've spoken to, there are going to be questions that you're asked that you don't know the answer to. And it may not be that you, it's probably not even that you don't truly know, it's that there's one dot that needs to be connected before you can connect the rest by yourself or something to that effect. And that happened with me as well. So I brought up that uh, pion decay. And at first I was completely stumped, but your committee your committee doesn't, that's not the goal. The goal is to like really see what you know and they kind of push you in the right direction if you get stumped. So when they asked me about the lifetimes and I, I really didn't know off the top of my head, then he asked a, a follow-up question of, well, what do, they de what do the particles decay into? And if you can think about that, then you can think about, oh, what interaction must have mediated this decay and then based on the strength of the interaction, you can deduce how long roughly the lifetime of the particle is. So once once I got that one follow-up question, uh, then then we were kind of set. So that's, that's what's kind of cool about it. it. It didn't feel like a normal exam. It felt like an exam, but also bits of conversation in it as well. So overall, great experience. It feels fantastic to finally be done with these formal exams to see if I have what it takes to do a PhD. Now there's no question. I'm a PhD candidate. Uh, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of Kelly. Kelly did the exact same thing in astronomy. She passed her oral exams. So now all that's left for us is to do PhDs in astrophysics and theoretical nuclear physics. <laughs> that's it. But this is a this feels like a really big milestone, but in another breath, we're just getting started. So I, I really appreciate you sticking around for the ride. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.